I'm going to go ahead and, and kick things off, but if you're ready to go. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dean Birch. Uh, I'm with Allied Travel. And uh, as usual, it's Thursday evening around 7 o'clock, and we're broadcasting live from uh, the friendly confines of Carpenter Avenue in Windsor Heights. <laughs> we have some construction going on at our house, doing some concrete work, and we've got dirt and dust everywhere. So that always makes things uh, fun and exciting. Kind of makes you a little bit grumpy. So, but we'll we'll get beyond that. Tonight uh, is number eighteen of uh, out of the last nineteen weeks where we have had a, had a webinar. And tonight we have with us CIE Tours, uh, Roger Kramer. And Roger is going to be speaking about uh, Ireland mainly. He'll also be talking about Scotland, England, and Italy as well. Uh, Roger Kramer is our Director of Sales for the Midwest with CIE Tours. And uh, with that, I think I'll just turn things over to Roger and uh, he can uh, start his presentation. Thank so you. Roger, Dean. please go ahead. All right. If I may ask, could everybody mute uh, their computer so we don't get backdrop? Yeah, that's great. Uh, one second, we have a couple more people that are signing in. You know? Okay. All right, uh, I like uh, Dean said, I'm with CIE Tours. I'm out here in tropical Chicago where it's 96 degrees out here. And I'm sure you guys are uh, suffering the, probably the same as we are. Um, uh, let's, let's, we have somebody else that's waiting to come in. All right. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, I was going to ask, usually I ask at a presentation if anyone knows what CIE stands for, but because we're doing this virtual, it's very difficult to see hands go up or somebody speak up. The long and short of it is CIE stands for Chorus Impa Errands. And why is this important? Because we're a division of the Irish government. And there are only three companies that are in Ireland. It would be the Tourist Board, Aer Lingus, and of course, ourselves. What we and we've been in business, and you're going to hear this again somewhere in the presentation. We're just inches away from being 90 years in business. One of the oldest tour operators in Ireland. And because we're a niche tour operator, uh, we primarily, and you can see at the bottom of the screen, that we do Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales. Iceland and Italy, and that is all we do. What I have done is taken and put together a presentation of, of beautiful places in not only Ireland, Scotland and others, but what I'm trying to point out to you is, even though we're in a pandemic, the beauty of the area is still there and it is waiting for everybody to come back. We are in the process of setting up all our programs for 21, 2021, and I will go through and show you some of this. Uh, I don't know how many people have been into the Ireland region, but I wanted you to see some of the beauties available out there. This particular shot is near Dingle, uh, which is on the western side of Ireland. Uh, reaching out into the ocean, which is absolutely beautiful. It's a great fishing village up into this area. But then this is the Cliffs of Moher. The Cliffs of Moher rise 700 feet uh, above the Atlantic. Uh, and it's one of the highest uh, mountain, or not mountains, but cliffs along the uh, uh, Atlantic Ocean. There is another area north, and they say those are 900 feet. So it's one of those rival things where who is bigger, who is better. But all of it is beautiful. The northern part of Ireland, uh, and you're going to go back and forth on this. This particular castle has an interesting story. Uh, it was it's located right near um, uh, the, the Giant's Causeway. On the back side, you can see uh, there's uh, the ocean 
on the far way out in the distance is Scotland. The king at this particular location was going to have a host a dinner. Uh, and while the everyone was seated around the table, all of a sudden they hear a large crash. The whole kitchen went into the ocean. So the, that ended their dinner. That also ended him living in this particular castle. I think they then, then went out and ordered McDonald's. I'm not sure. All right, then you're going to go south. This is Cove. Uh, it's spelled as even though it shows C O B and it's uh, Cove C O V E. Why this is important? Uh, for several reasons. One, uh, when the Great Famine was uh, in full uh, fledged, uh, everybody in Ireland, or th over three million people, proceeded to move down to Cove. This is where all the ships left Ireland to come to not only the United States, but Canada and also into Australia. Another factor here is just off the coast here, the Lusitania was torpedoed and many of the uh, uh, people in this village went out and saved a lot of people. They have a large, uh, in this area here, a large cemetery for those people. <laughs> what you're going to see here is uh, Annie Moore with her two brothers, uh, Anthony and Philip. If I was to turn around here at this picture, uh, you would see the Heritage Center. If any of you have Irish heritage, this would be one of the places that you want to look at and seek out. Only thing I ask you to do prior to going to Ireland is make sure you have a little more information than my name is Flanagan, because you, they need to do a little research while you're there. Uh, the story behind these three is they went came to the United States. They went through, they were the first Irish to go through Ellis Island. From there, they moved out to the Midwest. Uh, Annie moved, uh, was married and then moved to Kansas. Her brothers went with her. The brothers got homesick, they went back home. Uh, they stayed there for about a year and they decided to come back. Unfortunately, they boarded the Titanic. The Titanic uh, docked here, or not actually, uh, it moored here, and we, they um, uh, loaded 243 people, 123 of them survived. And of course, uh, as I showed you on the front, there was a beautiful, uh, beautiful lighthouse. This particular lighthouse is in Wales. But you can see the beauty, the calmness, uh, it, everything about this particular region. I do believe. Uh, give me one second. Um, okay. You're going to see. This is the Isle of Skies, or they call it the Mystic Isle. It's located on the western part of of Scotland. But as you can see, the Irish plaid is everywhere, even on the sheep. Uh, but it is something to see. It is absolutely incredible and beautiful. And if any of you were in a market for plaid, uh, it is available. Edinburgh, the capital of, of Scotland, uh, all roads lead to the castle. Uh, it's absolutely a, a gorgeous uh, city with a lot of history. Uh, the castle located in the center, you will actually be tours up into that area. Uh, they have several buildings that have survived the many attacks, uh, and it is interesting to see. But not only in Scotland or Edinburgh, you're going to see the military tattoo. If this is not on your bucket list, it should be. It's an absolute incredible performance. What we have is, I like to say we have tickets for every one of our, of our uh, um, Scotland trips right on the 50 yard line. Because you're going to be able to see the castle back here and you're going to notice that it, it is colored blue, but what they do is they choreograph to whatever group is out there performing. These are bands that come in from all over the world and are invited to participate. Again, it's the uh, first three weeks of August. And if you'll allow me a second again, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, 
I think that Davison's come from Wales. The Lake District. Lake District is lo located just on the outside of London uh, in the northern part. Uh, it's the most popular of all of the uh, UK's national parks. Absolutely gorgeous. And of course, London. Um, London really doesn't need any fanfare. Uh, most of our, our, our tours go in there. They spend two, maybe three days, and then they proceed outside of uh, and going into northern part of England. A, a point even in uh, the uh, that I like to point out is even in Edinburgh, you're going to see these multi levels of buildings back here. And as you notice, as you go near the top, the windows get smaller. And actually, the well-to-do lived at the bottom and it goes all the way up as you get to the top. Uh, it is more of, uh, there's no elevators in there, so they the people there had to uh, climb all those stories. We will proceed up into uh, Iceland. Iceland, I'm not even gonna begin, begin to embarrass myself with the uh, uh, saying the name. But there's, uh, this is only one of 10,000 waterfalls. There's close to 300 glaciers up there, and there's 30 active volcanoes. If you have not been to Iceland, I suggest that that could be on your bucket list. It is absolutely beautiful. We went up there in October of last year, and I was not, ex didn't know what to expect. We then get there and uh, then you had the opportunity to see this. You went out to the uh, went out to the glaciers and had an opportunity to uh, uh, to go out as close as you could to them. But there's so much history, so much uh, to see up there. And is it cold up there? No. Yeah, well, we were there in October. We did have the opportunity uh, to see a glimpse of the Northern Lights. Along the coast of Iceland, you're going to see the, the black sand beach. And of course, you know why they're black is because of the volcanic. But you're also going to see these columns or these formations. And if you will remember those, because later on, I'm going to point out some others. Weird. Hmm. Yeah. This is what's unique is the uh, UNESCO heritage site. Believe it or not, it's actually this crevice that goes through here. One side is North America. The other one side, one. Sorry. Oh, the other one side is North America. The other side is Eurasian. It's the uh, tectonic plates that uh, meet here. They they part an inch a year, so it is absolutely unique. And of course. Italy. I think we all know about Italy. Some of you have probably been there. Uh, but we do the tours down there. So you see all the sights and sounds of Rome to Venice to Italy, and I'll point those out. And as you can see, these are the locals. Uh, you see sheep everywhere. Uh, you're going to see uh, sheep herding, which is a very unique art. Uh, it's impressive how they teach these dogs to uh, to gather the sheep, but at the same time, there's those that don't want to go out and do it, and uh, so they hide in among the sheep. So it's, it, it is absolutely unique. This is what this region's all about. It is the, the people of Ireland. You're going to, you can go to the pubs. Even though if you don't drink beer or anything else, just go in and have a Coke. Because I'm telling you, this is where all the locals get together and they perform. And they have a different group almost every night. I, my wife and I went in there a year ago, uh, spring, uh, and we had the opportunity. And I said to her, you watch, we're going to sit down and I'll bet you somebody will be talking to us. Well, we got it, like I said to her, we had a half a pint. This gentleman came over and said, oh, Les, where you be from? I told him it was from Kazuntite, Iowa. He, oh, Patty, the family, they moved there. You must know them. And I, my wife turned to me and we looked back at him and about to say no, and he sat down and he wanted to know all the points. But this is the way they are there. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, what they 
because they they are so interested in everything that we do. Uh, they know everything about us in more shapes than one, but a lot of companies have their their headquarters over there. Somebody asked me once, uh, is there a bridge across the Atlantic? Well, of course you want to say no, but actually there is. This rope bridge actually goes across a portion of the Atlantic, <laughs> uh, so which makes that very unique. Uh, you're going to find that CIE, because of our service since 1932, we have high customer ratings. Because we're a division of the Irish government, they encourage us to come out with quality programs, uh, locally based guides. Uh, the guides are either Irish or English or, or Scottish. Uh, there's one guide on a coach for the uh, Irish portion and there's two in Scotland and Britain. Uh, we have received a lot of awards over the years. Uh, these mostly come from Scotland. And when you consider Ireland and Scotland is probably big competitors and rivals, uh, it's really a compliment to say that we beat out a lot of uh, other Irish or uh, Scottish tour operators. What I didn't tell you on the other slide that I think is very important to bring up here, we do not charge for options. Everything that we spell out is included. It can cost a couple, probably $80 a day for options. So if we say we're taking you out to the uh, Blarney Castle and kiss the Blarney Stone, uh, you will go out and do that. Some charge $16.80 a person just to go out there and do this. Everything is included. We, our guides are, as it states here, uh, are interested on the commentary, not on selling your tri trips. When you go further north, you're going to be seeing the cat there. I'm sorry there. You know how we say there's a McDonald's and Burger King on every corner. Well, you can almost say that with all the beautiful castles that are all throughout. Well, Scotland and Ireland and in Britain, Wales has the most castle castles uh, in that region. What I want to point out here is are the are the guides. Uh, they stay with you all throughout. They give you the commentary. But uh, the one thing I want to point out is when you come over here to the seats, because of what the Pandora is Pandora pan, pandemic is doing to us, and every place else in Europe, uh, or be Mexico or Hawaii, it is affecting our region. Um, the EU has mandated and put out, and as you can read every other day, they keep changing their policy. I want you to know because we're a division of the Irish government, we keep our finger on the pulse because they are meeting every two weeks to go over the ins and outs and do's and don'ts. As we talk, and I'm going to repeat this again later, uh, we average about 26 people uh, on a coach. The coach holds 44. So until this is over, the pandemic, this is what you're going to see. The drivers, when you're wherever there's a, a heavy amount of traffic on the coach, whether you're touching the back, your armors, they come through and they clean it while you're on the out on the tour. We also then clean it every night and uh, to the top to the bottom. So we are on top of what we need to do. Is this going to change? Oh, I'm sure it's going to change and possibly with the vaccine here, uh, whether good, bad, or indifferent comes out at the end of the year, uh, we'll see this open up more. The We have, for this year, had to cancel all our tours from April all the way through uh, to December for this reason. And there was a uh, couple of reasons too, because the hotels were closed, the attractions were closed. They didn't really know because we hadn't had guidance from the government as to which way we were going to go. And the accommod uh, you can see how many tours that we have for uh, 2021. Uh, we do have 18. As I told you, they're all inclusive. Uh, you, uh, we do the north, we do the south, we do faith-based, uh, we do his uh, history. Uh, it's whatever you want. You're going to find it on one of the tours. Scotland, we do four, but when you tack on Scotland and Ireland together, uh, we have a total of nine. You're going to see Britain and you're going to see Britain and Ireland together. 
Italy, we have two, and I will show you those two. But as you can see, we have a wide range of tours for 2021. And of course, going up into, as I told you, I, this has probably become my new favorite because I really enjoyed Iceland. And we did have an opportunity on the tour. We were, it wasn't this picture uh, of seeing uh, the Northern Lights. And of course, you're going to see the beauty of uh, the can canyons. Uh, this is over 300 feet high and a mile and a half long. And of course, it was all just like the Colorado River. It uh, came through and carved it out. Oh, this is a favorite spot of mine. In fact, I don't know if you can see it, but there is an individual. I thought that may be me, but you got to do the you got to do the spa. You got to do the Blue Lagoon. Uh, it's famous for up there, and there's, there's several other places that you can go, but this is the most popular one of all the lagoons. And yes, is it warm? Yeah, it's probably anywhere from couldn't be up to 80 to over 100 degrees, but you don't know it. But then again, you can see around here. Uh, with the snow or the chill. Iceland, as I told you, has two programs. Uh, we have one that's just the taste of Ireland. And if you were to follow the map, you're going to take the southern route. If you do the northern, you're going to have the opportunity to see the uh, northern lights, uh, which would be coming up this way. So there are two tours. You're going to see that they're on an average of six days. You're going to see the meals. Uh, plan, which is a full American breakfast every day, and then we also include uh, some dinners. And then, of course, Italy. Uh, again, uh, I don't know how many I'd like to say, raise your hand so I can see how many, but the point is a lot of people have been to Italy. Uh, we are doing it. Uh, we're looking at a good year of 21 for Italy. And you're going to have an opportunity to see a, a lot of the uh, artwork and the beauty there. Awesome. We also have two tours that go into Italy. Uh, you're going to do the Taste, uh, which is a seven day program. And then we have the Taste of Italy with Sorrento. And that is a 10 day program. And you can see that it's hitting all the highlights uh, of Italy. Really, Venice is all the way up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accommodations. I told you about the requirements from the government to for the hotels. We are meeting with the hotels regularly because we need to find out what their plans are for opening. We represent them and we expect our clients to have a comfortable stay. These just happen to be castles. We do have tours uh, that are castles. Some of our tours, you stay in one night in a castle. Some of them you stay every night. But the point is, is they're going through uh, a lot of checks and balances for the, the clean uh, cleanliness. Some of them have even told us when the people leave, they close the room down for two days to make sure they clean it. Uh, some of the hotels are doing that now. They also clean all the public rooms. All right, uh, small groups. This is kind of what I was telling you at the beginning. 26 people on a tour. Uh, we also then have tours that have groups that we will only do 26. And we're finding that this is probably going to be the norm. Uh, through most of next year. All right, if you don't want a coach tour or you're taking a regular tour, you can also drive it yourself. And we have an independent program where you can lay out what you, where you want to go, book some of the B&Bs prior to going over. Uh, you're going to find that they um, uh, have a, a GPS system that is included in it. We provide the first uh, uh, portion of insurance. However, I always strongly recommend that you take uh, the full amount of, of uh, insurance. It's inevitable that you're going to blow a tire or you're going to lose a hubcap, so it may as well be covered. But you can go wherever you want. It's usually about a six day program. Uh, some people go over there because they got friends and family and that's where they want to go, so they don't need a tour. Private driver. Private driver has 
strengthen up. It was going very well up until March. Uh, we've already seen advanced bookings for 21. And what it amounts to, you can either customize. You can get your family together, one to nine people, uh, lay out an itinerary what, where you want to go, or we can provide you with selected itineraries. But nonetheless, you can do what you want. The driver stays with you. He does narration or she does narration as you go. You can pre-book your hotels or castles or manor houses. But the drivers are either Scottish, and as you can see, we're doing Britain as well. So it is something, it's been in our uh, uh, books for the last four years, and it's really great, uh, increased. Our documents. Our documents uh, range from a backpack, as you see there. We also have a pouch that I like to use for all my receipts. And of course, you never need this, but we do have a rain rain pouch. Uh, it's got a uh, raincoat in it. But we also provide you, uh, new last year was uh, the converter. A lot of people go over into Ireland or Britain or Germany or whatever. They need to get a converter. This is what we include in the backpack, along with tags. All right, La Penny Bridge in Liffey uh, or over the R Liffey River. It's, it divides the north and the south of Dublin. I do believe the reason why I got the name of La Penny because it cost a half a penny to cross over this when it was first built. Don't ask me why. You go over to uh, you go over to Trinity College, and and which is located right in the heart or in the middle of Dublin, and you're going to find not only uh, one of the longest libraries uh, in Europe, and you're going to go in there to me. It smelled like leather that goes back into the 1700s. It, they had ladders to would go up to get the books off the top. It is so impressive. I really like this. But then you can go downstairs and you can see the Books of Kells. The Books of Kells were written by monks uh, back in the 8th century, and it, they turn a page a day. So if you have an opportunity, you can stay there and read them for a year. And of course, you're going to be seeing many of castles that I told you about. Uh, this one happens to be uh, in Kilkenny. It was built by the Norman uh, Strongbow, and he lived in it for a number of years. However, then the Butler family bought it, and they have li they live in it in 500 years. So it's a family tradition, but it is absolutely exquisite, as you can see. Now we've went from the castle to the rock. This rock is the Skilling Islands, about eight miles off the coast of the uh, Ring of Kerry. These are known because monks lived on them for over 600 years. And this is what they lived and survived and died on. You can see some of the, uh, what they lived in, the uh, huts, um, or the honeybees as they called them, huts, but they were able to, they stayed out there and survived off the fish and the lay of, the, if you want to call it the lay of the land. Uh, but also, this is where Star Wars was filmed. Uh, some of the sequences were out there on this island. <laughs> and of course, uh, it could not wow. be done without uh, Adair Manor, which is an absolutely beautiful hotel. It's been just recently renovated. And look at the grounds. But gentlemen, if any of you play golf, you're going to find that most of the around the castles, there's a golf course. Now, I did it uh, when I was there with my wife last fall or last spring. All I wanted to say is I played golf in Ireland. So I went to the pro shop that's and I, he said, here's two clubs if you want. That's all I wanted. And he gave me a dozen balls and I said, I don't need that many. Oh, lad, you will need a dozen balls. Well, when I went out there, I think I lost over almost all of them. But then as I was making my way back, because uh, I only played about three holes, I found a dozen because everybody hits them off to the side. This one didn't really have a links to it, so it didn't have the gr high grass on the side. But it was something I can say I did. Remember those columns I showed you up in Iceland? 
you're going to see these columns uh, in the northern part of Ireland. In fact, it's very close to that castle I told you about uh, that part of it fell into the ocean. And as you can see, they range everything from two all the way up to 40 feet, two inches to 40 feet. And it's a big area along the northern coast. They were created 60 million years ago uh, by volcanic that came through the earth. Thing to point out here is Jacques Stoke uh, came up there to find out if this went all the way over to Scotland. On a clear day, you can see Scotland out here. He went down and found out that they go all the way over to Scotland. So and I, I thought maybe they went all the way over to Iceland because there was uh, they were in Iceland as well. The Titanic Belfast. So many people call this the Titanic Museum. And that's not true because there are no artifacts in it. You, you will find all your artifacts for the Titanic either down in Branson, Missouri or in Las Vegas. Here it tells the history of building the Titanic. This front building here is the height of the hull of the Titanic. Inside there are about nine floors of everything about the history of the building uh, and all the way down to the sinking. You're going to see, as you see here, uh, a recreated stairway. There's also a first and second class suite. If you're into the Titanic uh, and the history behind it, this you would enjoy. We have created a couple new tours for people that don't want to travel around and, stay, uh, and move from hotel to hotel. This particular tour, uh, you can see, went into it there. I'll go back into a dare, and then you then we take you around to different. The most it is is 90 minutes, so, but you can use this as a pivot point because you've got five nights of hotel, uh, and so you have an opportunity to see the cliffs of more, the Dingle Peninsula, and a whole lot more. Uh, and this is the way to do it. We also have the same program in uh, in uh, London, and they are both six day programs. And you can see you stay in London but have the opportunity then to go around to the, the highlights of what England has to offer, whether it be the Roman Baths, uh, Stonehenge, uh, the Cathedral, or Windsor Castle. Sure. Now there are people that say, well, you must end all your programs in March. No, not anymore. We actually start these trips in November and run them through April. They're a seven day program and it's more of an independent type program, but uh, we help and lay out the, the, the routing if, they, if people want to do this. And it amounts to seeing things on an off season. It is also less busy. Uh, you're going to find no lines. So I think it is something that a lot of people like to do. But we also do not only the north, uh, we also do the south. I hope we do the south. There we go. All right, you're going to find that you're doing the same thing. You're using Dublin as your pivot point, and you can see how this goes. And again, it's independent. You're not with other people. And you're uh, you're going to do the tours. Oh, that's that brings up a good point. If do you remember the the coaches that we saw in London? Those two red ones. Those are what we call hop on and hop off coaches. So you can take a day tour and go from site to site, get off, get back on the coach. Applies also into uh, Dublin. You're going to find that it stops at 23 different places. You can do the same thing, get, get off, wait for the next one to come. Uh, ours uh, in England, or excuse me, in Dublin include either Guinness, uh, the Epic Center, which if you wanted to find more about heritage, it's there. You'll find about the post office, and I'll explain that. And you'll also go to Jameson. The post office <laughs> is very important for the history of Dublin for the simple fact that this is where the rebellion of 1916 started. And so you can go in, see the museum in there, uh, and all the history about it. Okay, the Scottish Highlands. It's an area that is absolutely beautiful. And when we were there, uh, there was even snow up on the top, as if I need to see snow. <coughs> but Outlander was filmed here. One thing about this whole region, 
uh, whether it be Scotland, Ireland, Britain, or Wales, a lot of film or movies have been filmed here. Uh, so because of the beauty and the background and the history. This is kind of neat because you're going out uh, up in the northern part and you're going to not only see the castle, but this is also Loch Ness. This is on the uh, lock that comes down from the Atlantic. So, and of course, people have said they've seen Loch Ness. I don't know if they stayed at the pub a little bit too long, but they have seen it. And of course, uh, <coughs> also located, as you can see, a lot of these places that you're going to be able to go into. This is the man's castle. This is St. Andrews. Is this is the bridge going over the 18th hole. Okay, and what you do is that you stay over here, you wait for the force to play through, then you run out here and you take pictures. You can go up here, and this is where you can pick up your hat, your towels, your shirts, all that stuff, just like I did. My wife thought I was the, it was a man's cave because of St. Andrews. But understand, this is part of St. Andrews right over here. You can actually go downtown, and find a lot of the same things I found there for half price. Just just in the foreground. But it is beautiful. The people are very accommodating. In fact, I went to the to the uh, starter and got two cards. I wrote up one and saying I shot a 68. The other one I just kept. Nobody would believe I shot a 68 anyway. All right. This is in Wales. It's another one of the UNESCO World Sites. It was built back in the 12th century. And as you can see, it is absolutely beautiful. The thing that I have to tell you is, again, in Wales, a lot of this has got more castles than anywhere else, there, but it's hard to believe. And of course, uh, a beautiful, uh, this is glacier uh, formed, uh, and you can see still the snow up on top, but it is, it's almost a mirror. Uh, it, it was absolutely beautiful. Now, Dean said he would give a free trip to anybody that can pronounce this. Okay, time's up. It's 57, 58 letters. Uh, it's a name of a town in Wales. Uh, it's on the train. I can't imagine, but the conductor probably would have to start saying it before they left the last stop. But as you can see, uh, it's very interesting. I won't even begin to tell you uh, what it says, but I will tell you this is the meaning. Now, if you can understand that meaning, it's just as confusing as the as the name of the town. All right. There are beautiful. This is down in the southern coast of uh, of uh, England. It's near Cornwall, uh, and it's a, 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 as you can see a beautiful area right along the Atlantic. Uh, and you'll have an opportunity because we have tours that go down into this region. And of course, Stonehenge. People want to go see Stonehenge as well as going to see possibly the White Cliffs of Dover. And as you can see, it's exquisite. You'll also be going to the uh, Roman baths. And that's interesting because it goes down about three levels, four levels, and you have an opportunity to read, see, and uh, all about the Roman baths. <laughs> What you're going to find here is, is the reason why I'm bringing this up is it is important for those of you that want to take families over to Ireland. It only or Scotland or Britain. It's only 10 people. Uh, and you can share or you do the coach. Uh, you can do a tour out of the book or you can custom it, customize it. You can also do a private group that's just yours. Uh, so. These are several different ways, and I know Eli can take care of uh, setting this up. Really. What we're doing, uh, because we're just introducing this for 2021 uh, through Allied, we have, as you can see, it, a 10% discount. Uh, it's good for 30 days. You just pick any one of the tours. There's a couple of tours that are not included, like the uh, uh, tattoo uh, in the uh, St. Patrick's Day tour, but you're going to find that you can save yourself substantial money by looking at this for next year. And as you can see, we've really done the I thing, whether it be Ireland or Iceland or Italy. 
I understand next year in the book, we're going to add more eyes and it's going to be Iowa, Illinois and Indiana. So we are, we are expanding up. All right. OK, let's go. Anything that you uh, is there any questions? Yes, All right. And I think Dean has a few things to say. Yeah, yeah, Roger. I just <coughs> muted myself. I want to make sure you can hear me okay. I can hear you. Well, thank you very much, Roger. Uh, one thing I think you will uh, realize is how uh, how flexible CIE Tours is, whether it be a completely independent tour where it's pretty much a fly, drive, and hotel program, uh, could be a, a tour with a driver, a private driver, and that could be uh, uh, two people or it could be six, eight people, a small group, uh, a family, uh, or it could be uh, a regular tour on a motor coach. Uh, and as Roger said, uh, in the spring, those motor coaches are going to be for about 24 to 26 people. So CIE does uh, offer a lot of flexibility. Most of our clients going to Europe start with a personal meeting with us. And uh, we can do that meeting in our office. Uh, we are open uh, now every day. Uh, we can also do those via Zoom, whichever is most convenient for you. But most of those meetings do start uh or most people going to Europe uh, do start with a personal meeting where we sit down, uh, we kind of take an inventory of what you want to accomplish, how much time do you have, where do you want to go, and then how, how do we better. But, uh, but that, that is probably the, the best way to start that process. Uh, one thing uh, Roger did not talk about is the air. We certainly are going to assist you uh, with that as well. Uh, and a lot of our clients today are flying, uh, you know, premium economy uh, in business class. And so we can give those options to you also. So I would encourage you to uh, to think about uh, setting a time to meet with us. Uh, and then again, we can determine whether we want to do that in person or if we want to do that via Zoom. Uh, I will mention that Ally Travel is going to be doing a group to Ireland and it is going to be next September. Uh, we are in the process of working on this group right now. Uh, you know, we are more than a, a year out at this point, but it is going to be an approximate 10 day tour and it will be starting uh, leaving Des Moines uh, the first week after Labor Day. Uh, we'll be doing all of Ireland, both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So. If you have an interest in doing a group with just people from Des Moines, uh, please let us know. And uh, as those details develop and pricing uh, in itinerary, we'll make sure that uh, we keep you informed of that. So that's what's going on uh, with groups. Uh, I will mention that uh, I mentioned earlier in my remarks that this is the, uh, the 18th uh, in, in our webinar series. It is the last of the summer series, and that means that uh, all of you have, I'm sure, uh, uh, downloaded your virtual passport. If you haven't, you know, you can go to our website. Uh, you can click on the events tab, uh, download that virtual passport, uh, and then uh, tonight's uh, password uh, is Emerald, as in the Emerald Isle. Uh, for about uh, uh, the, the next week, you can uh, fill out those those virtual passports and submit those to us. Uh, then we will be doing a drawing uh, for uh, an Ally Travel gift certificate. So I would encourage you to uh, to do that. As you probably already know, uh, all of the all of our webinars have been recorded, uh, or I should say, most of them. Uh, if you did miss some or you missed some passwords or missed content, you can again go to our website on the events tab, click on that, and then all of those uh, recorded webinars are there and uh, you can view those at your leisure. So that is uh, a little bit about, about what, uh, what you need to do with the virtual passport. Our, uh, we are going to be starting our fall 
series. Uh, that will begin. We're going to take a few weeks off, but on Thursday evening, September the 17th at 7 p.m., our first fall webinar uh, will be with the Hawaii and Convention uh, Bureau. But Alex Roth is with the Hawaii Convention Bureau. She is going to be uh, doing a presentation on, on Hawaii that evening. So please put that, that on your calendar uh, if you do have uh, an interest in Hawaii. So those are the things uh, uh, taking place. Uh, Roger, uh, I don't know if people have raised their hands, if they've submitted questions. I'm not sure if there are any questions. Uh, are you aware of any? No, I'm not. I see it. They're all, some of them are muted if they want to unmute, if they have any questions. 